Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Susan Patricelli Regan, and my guest is Arthur House, former Chief Cy Cybersecurity Risk Officer for the State of Connecticut. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Arthur. It's good to see you again, Susan. Yeah. Well, you've been you've been busy, uh, I know, and we want to kind of bring folks up to date as to what you've been doing and where we're going with our cybersecurity. Give us a little bit of background, Art, on you know your your background, your career, what led you to this position where you were nominated by our former governor. Malloy. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, I have a background in national security, international relations. Uh, many years ago, I served on the National Security Council staff. And most recently, uh, under the Obama administration, I worked for the director of national intelligence. And when my intelligence work wrapped <laughs> up, uh, Governor Malloy appointed me to be chairman of the political, of the Connecticut Public Utilities Regulatory Authority. Okay. When I came, uh, there are people in the intelligence community and in the energy community who said, look, there's a big problem. The states regulate our utilities, not the federal government. Mm -hmm. And the states are vulnerable to cyber attacks. There is, we're afraid of penetration. Uh, and the state regulatory authorities are really not in position to do that. And if you're going up to this new job, we'd like to have a couple of states get started. Could you do that? And so when I became chairman, I talked to Governor Malloy about that, mm -hmm. and he was fascinated. He was a yeah. bit of a policy wonk. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, sure, write yeah. a strategy. And I did with the utilities. Okay. And then um, he, the governor announced it, and we set up an action plan. And the action plan brought together uh, water, electricity, natural gas, and the regulators, and we agreed that there would be annual reviews okay. of how they're doing in their defenses against a cybersecurity so, intrusion. So let me just say here, because yes. those are all critical areas. Critical. Critical areas because if you lose all those different powers, if you will, or support systems, the state shuts down. It does. Okay. It does. And if you shut down electricity, within about a couple of weeks, you lose water because mm -hmm. water is purified by mm -hmm. electricity. Mm -hmm. So yes, they're all linked. Okay. Um, we launched it. and the. The utilities agreed. Once a year, four state authorities, four state mm -hmm. people would do mm -hmm. the review. Mm -hmm. It would be confidential. They could choose their own standard of evaluation. Um, and it would be made public in a letter to the governor and the General Assembly, which okay. we have done. Okay. And the utilities get to review it. And if they think there's anything in there that might compromise their defenses, their security, they point that out. And that has not been a problem. Okay. And they have generally agreed with what we've done, but we've worked very closely together. Yes. Now that plan got a lot of national attention. We were the first state to have a collaboration between the state oh. authorities and the utilities to do it. And it's gotten some international uh, Well, that's a bit of a feather well. in the cap of the state. Yes. Well, it, yeah. it, it's worked. Yeah. Uh, and because of that, I, the State Department, the U.S. State Department, has sent me on about six trips to different parts of Europe mm -hmm. to help European regulators learn about the Connecticut model mm -hmm. and how to collaborate with utilities. I continue mm -hmm. to do that work. Okay. So that's critical infrastructure, the okay. utilities, sort of full right. stop on that. Right. Because that worked, Governor Malloy then said, could you come in and do a strategy and an action plan for Connecticut? Business, state government, municipal government, right. law enforcement, uh, higher education. Right. Uh, and so I've been working for the past several years on... Uh, putting together a strategy and an action plan, which we've completed. And so that's the other part of it. Yes. Well, now, in, in going forward, I, I think in order to have our viewers get a true picture of what's going on here, um, you, your strategy plan is something that is, is critical to, because a lot of people think about computers and you know, cyber, cyber security. So when we talk cyber security, what is the definition of cyber? because we can be hit from all different places. So how does that work? Cyber, you're, thanks for pointing that out, because okay. it is a bit amorphous, I guess. People don't know what it means. Right. I look at cyber, cyber as the combination Star of, Wars <laughs> of the computer and the okay. Internet. Right. And how do we get there? We got there because back in the uh, 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. the Defense Advanced Projects Research Agency DARPA, it, okay. was, it was the think tank of the yes. Defense Department, yeah. set up this fusion of computers and the internet 
amongst a trusting community. They were U.S. scientists. They were our national laboratories, all the way from Lincoln Labs at, in Massachusetts okay. to Lawrence Livermore. Okay. And with the military and the intelligence community, with a, it was all focused on the Cold War, right. especially on nuclear matters. Right. It could move vast amounts of information instantly wow. by what we now call right. cyber, the computer and the Internet. Right. And it was not built with security in mind at all. It was done by a trusting group of people, almost all of whom had security clearances, they're mm -hmm. all on the same team because they were, it was a Cold War. Right. And they're worried about protecting the country against right. a nuclear incident. Now, that system of, of transmitting vast amounts of information instantaneously right. has now gone global. And so, obviously, there are now, it's no longer a trusting community. It's the whole world. Right. And there are people who are using it for financial game, for national security advantage, mm -hmm. um, to, to steal intellectual property, mm -hmm. for all kinds of different mm -hmm. purposes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are profoundly vulnerable today. I, I, often, I give a lot of public speech talks. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm always asked is, are we safe? Yeah. And, and well, the yeah. answer is no, we yeah. are not safe, no. but, but we live as though we were. Right. We, we depend on the computer, the smartphone, the right. internet. Right. It's part of our daily lives. Yes. And anything can be penetrated. I literally mean anything. Right. Our intelligence agencies, the Defense Department, the White House, major corporations have all been penetrated. You put enough money and, and personnel into it and anything can be penetrated. Mm -hmm. So no, we are extremely vulnerable. And yet, we, we don't, obviously, we don't recognize that because if we did, we'd want to run around worried all day. Sure, sure, of course. Well, let, let's, just, let's just say, give us a sort of an example uh, of um, something comes through and there's a concern about it. How do you go about the investigation or, uh, or solving of or making a defense, creating a defense? How, well, how does it work? Well, there are, there are probes, attacks every day. Our... Mm -hmm. Our electricity distribution companies, uh, every hour they have hundreds of attacks, mm -hmm. sometimes thousands of probes. Mm -hmm. And they have firewalls, perimeters put up to detect okay. it and screen it out. Secondly, we have personnel who suppose something did happen. Right. How do you detect it and how do you contain it? Right. One of the things that we need to work on, I was just in the Baltic states. Mm -hmm. The Estonians have the most advanced cybersecurity program in the world. Really? They do. Oh. And the reason is that they were, they were penetrated and fried by the Russians uh, in 2007, uh -huh. 2008, for reasons we can get into. My okay. point is, they have been attacked and shut down. Wow. They recovered, and you don't have to tell them that cyber is a weapon. They know that. They've been attacked. They've been compromised. So they're very advanced on this. And I talked to them about the Connecticut plan, and the, yeah. the, the, the cybersecurity officer there smiled and said, <laughs> it's exactly, ours is exactly like Connecticut's. Really? I said, really? Yeah. I said, could I see yours? He said, no, it's classified. <laughs> yeah. but, but trust me, we're very yeah. much the same. Yes. That was a couple of years ago. When I saw him a couple of weeks ago, I said, what are you doing? And he said, we assume at any given time we could be attacked again. Okay. And so we have response exercises, four or five a year. Okay. And we never announce them ahead of time. Okay. He said, I, as a minister, mm -hmm. know, and the head of the, mm -hmm. the, the head of the utility knows, right. but no one else does. All we know is battle stations, there's been a cyber incident. Okay. Go to your post and defend right. the country. Right. And sometime when they're in the midst of it all, they'll say, this is a test. Okay. But you don't know that when it starts. And they assume a complete shutdown. Okay. Uh, that's what Connecticut needs to do and all states need to do. Are we prepared to do that? Are we on the verge of doing that? I mean, we've never, we have never had so a drill in Connecticut. Do, uh, we don't do it Postulated well. okay. solely on a cyber attack. We've okay. included cyber into other things, okay. but with the great premise being, the main premise being, we have under, we are under a cyber attack. No, Connecticut has never done it, nor have a lot of other states. Yeah. And it's different. So is that there, part, has this been part of your strategy? Then? Yes, we okay. call for it. Okay. Uh, but the reason is the rules are completely different. Under a, under a hurricane or an ice storm, one of the prime rules of emergency managers mm -hmm. is never go public until you have all the facts. You're right. Yeah. With Rather to be a little late and correct. Uh, than you're right. In the cyber, you don't have that luxury. Right. You have to go immediately before you know what's going on. Okay. Why? Because word will be out on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, mm -hmm. and there'd be mm -hmm. incidents, there'd be rumors, there'd be shutdowns. Sure. So the governor has to immediately go before the cameras and say, okay. 
things are happening. Come back. We'll be here every two hours, and we'll right. update you. Right. Uh, this is what we know. This is what we don't know. There is a rumor out there about this. We know that is not true. Okay. But stay tuned. We are your source of information, and we're managing this. We're in control. Secondly, you have to have 20 or 30 major questions already researched and answered mm -hmm. so that when something happens, you don't run around saying, uh-oh, this just happened. What are we going to say? You have to have prepared that ahead of time, mm -hmm. and you have to agree on what the language is going to be. And they say, you know, incident number 10 just happened. We'll get the response to incident number 10 and run with it. So it's, it's completely are different. Are there learning curves every time? Oh, absolutely. There, there are learning curves. Well, you find things that didn't work or could work better. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Now, what kind, I know you can't share it or necessarily, but um, does this need a continuing large budget? Uh, because you talk about maybe staff, and you t I mean, when we look at making this more sophisticated and enlarging it or becoming more uh, uh, expanded or however, it, is there a sufficient budget currently in Connecticut to cover well, the need? I was the only, for the last three years, I yes. have been the only cybersecurity risk officer with no staff. Oh, so, and right? I was paid for by public utility funds, so there was okay, no cost. Because you used to work for PIRA. Yeah, I used to work yeah, for Pura. That's yeah. right. So n no cost to the right. taxpayers of Connecticut mm -hmm. other than through the Pura okay. funds. Um, our, uh, we had a proposal calling for four or five, which, which didn't pass muster. Mm. So uh, right now there is no staff okay. on cybersecurity in Connecticut as of today, the end of October. Is there somebody running it? Uh, well, um, I mean, I know you're still consulting. There is now a, chi there is now a chief information officer okay. uh, who is very competent. Okay. And, uh, uh, so should something happen, he would be the one who would okay. step in. And re but the answer is, it's not so much the cost, a budget cost, as it is, we've talked to the, the business community. Mm. They're willing to rally. We've talked to higher education. Um, there are now 4,000 cybersecurity jobs in Connecticut vacant. Oh, wow. Wanted. Our, our community colleges produce between 15 and 40 graduates a year. Hmm. And we've called for the curriculum that is used very well at uh, Naugatuck, for example, okay. or, or, or at Charter Oak, mm -hmm. and they're doing some startup work in Manchester, to spread that curriculum to other uh, community colleges mm -hmm. and to have it work. Mm -hmm. Now, you might say, w w does that cost something? Well, it might. You might have to offer that course instead of another. I see. But right. my point is that we're not approaching the 4,000 jobs, which would help the business community. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're, not, we're barely doing 1% of the need. Mm. Uh, so there, it does take some personnel and investment, but the main thing is in, in, it's a, it it's a, po a right political priority. It needs the right people with the experience, That's with right. the skill set. The skill sets, and it has to be a political priority. And the collaboration with the various businesses and the Absolutely. banks and the energy department and so forth, um, because I, I think you used the expression even before we started taping was we all have to be on the same page here. We all, all have on to the be same invested page. in the same objectives. In Connecticut, the defense industry, Sikorsky United Technologies mm -hmm. Electric Boat, mm -hmm. is very much on board. Mm -hmm. The banks are. The insurance industry mm -hmm. has to oh, be. Oh, I'm sure the banks, yes. The, the, the health industry right. is. Right. But half of all businesses in Connecticut, by number, not, not these large ones, but by right, number, right. have never done a risk assessment of any kind at mm. all, mm. never mind cybersecurity. Mm. And I think the, the, when you talk to them, you say, why not? Mm -hmm. They say, well, I'm too small. They won't come after me. Oh. And my response is, it's like a town that says, we will not undergo a cyber attack. We're too small. Mm. And then they get attacked. And my point is... Probably for you, that very reason. Right. You're understaffed exactly. or under -experienced. You may You may think you're not going to... Like the Baltics get, say. So I mean, that's right. You know. But you don't decide that. Yes. Someone else does. And out there, there are plenty of attackers who say, it's not a big prize. It's a small business. It's a small town. Right. But it's an easy... Right. It's an easy... Low-hanging fruit. Easy $20,000 to go in and shut them down. Hmm. Now, when we talk about these cyber attacks, are these <clears throat> a conglomerate of people, individuals... Uh, Three kinds. Okay. Number one are the nation states. And right. the four main culprits are the ones you read about in the news. Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. Okay. And they mainly have national security interests in what they do. Secondly, there are three very large international crime syndicates that are quite sophisticated mm. and they attack. Sort and of the, the mafia of the cyber. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. they're, and they're, they're extensive. Okay. okay. Then there are 
thousands of cyber mercenaries. Somebody in a third world country with a laptop can shut down uh, the security system or the, the computer system of a town in Connecticut. Mm. Uh, and they do. Mm. So it, the, those, it, it doesn't take a lot of sophistication. In mm. fact, you and I can go out on the dark web and buy a ransomware kit ourselves really? for not a lot of money and, and, and shut down a town. I mean, it's that easy to do. Good grief. Or a small business. Good grief. So <clears throat> how do they, um, I, I guess the word is, how do, they, how do they get the experience to do this? If you buy the kit, you mean it's that simple to use? Yeah. It's, well, it's kind of like making a bomb. You go on the internet yes, and right. you figure out. You, might, you might want to talk to somebody who's done it before. But okay. yes, But yes, it is quite easy to do. And people say, what should we do? Well, there is a business. We have a lot of them in mm-hmm. Connecticut and all over of professional, uh, inter, of mm-hmm. professional computer security specialists, mm-hmm. the internet. You can, mm-hmm. just like you have it, somebody sure. prepares your taxes. Right. Now, you could do your own taxes if you spent a lot of time keeping up with the new regulations, the new laws, all the things you need to know. You right. could do it, but you have a job. Right, right. Uh, and, and a family and have all kinds you have, of You have a lot of other things yeah. to do. And unless you do it a lot and frequently, you'll miss something. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with cybersecurity. If you want to become an IT specialist, and set up the firewalls and set up all the defenses you have to and keep up to speed with all the new malware, mm-hmm. you could probably do it, but hire someone. I mean, if mm-hmm. you happen to, if you have a day job, and unless you want to do that, mm-hmm. hire one of the professionals who can come in, look at your business, mm-hmm. your town government, mm-hmm. your personal account, mm-hmm. and make sure that you are doing what is reasonable. Now, having said that, anybody can penetrate it. Mm-hmm. They put the, but you want to make it. But they keep coming up new ways to get new in. New ways to do it, but you want to make it difficult for them. Okay. You want them to come in and say, oh, can't get in there, okay. can't get in there. Gosh, they've got this protection. The heck with it. This one's too tough. I'm going to move on to somebody else. Uh-huh. Now, <clears throat> the protection thing, how, do you, how does one determine what firewalls you can put up? Ask or? a professional. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Ask a yeah. professional. Okay. So is it worthwhile? All right. Let's talk to the business community for a moment now. Right. Uh, we're trying to increase our, our businesses here in Connecticut and retain the businesses we have. Uh, we have a lot of startups. Uh, we have a lot of entrepreneurial people and so forth. And when you say that to hire a professional um, to the business people, how do, you, how do you go about doing that? Where, where do you go? I mean, you're not going to look in classifieds <clears throat> or something. So you've got a nice little hardware store going or whatever it may be. Right. Well, as I just said, there are at least 4,000 okay. vacancies in mm-hmm. Connecticut. Mm-hmm. The business community has, there are two groups that really want action. One of the large players I talked about, mm-hmm. they would like Connecticut to be a state with a competitive edge. Okay. Where we have a cybersecurity culture. Yes. We're advancing it. In Virginia, when Terry McAuliffe was governor, he said Virginia is a cyber state. That's why you invest in Virginia. That's why you come here. Right. And every speech he gave had a big cybersecurity mm-hmm. component. Mm-hmm. The business community would like to say cyber is a recognized priority in Connecticut. And we're doing our part as big businesses. We want everyone to do it. Right. Secondly, organized business. The CBIA, the Connecticut Business right. and Industry Association, mm-hmm. the Metro Hartford Alliance, Southwest, you know, the Middlesex, mm-hmm. they all recognize this and they all say, we need to make cybersecurity a priority. Mm-hmm. The, the problem are the businesses who don't participate. And how do you get them on board? Right. Well, you have to cajole. Well, I mean, don't you make it serious enough to say, you know, you've got it, to It has to... been serious enough for years. Oh. You, you, I talk, Is it because they haven't gotten hit? I, that's right. I oh. talk to people all the time who say, look, every dollar I have, it could go into product development and mm-hmm. go into marketing mm-hmm. and go into Research, hiring personnel whatever. and so on. Yeah. And I just don't have the money. Well, right. then you get shut down. Now, what do businesses do? A lot of things. They have software. They have... Uh, upgrades, they have corporate culture, mm-hmm. uh, they have passwords, they do two-factor authentication. Mm-hmm. They do all of the things that a business should do to make it difficult to break in. Mm-hmm. And this is something that could be a great boon to business in Connecticut, to make it known that we are a cybersecurity state. Yes. We take it seriously, it is a priority, and businesses share that in common. Yes. That's a great opportunity yeah, Yes, for actually, that, that's a, that would be a very good factor to have. That would, that's a great selling point, uh, particularly if you have the concern. All right, so let's, let's talk for a moment now about, <clears throat> you talk about any, any hacker can get in, any mercenary can get in. 
when they go in, it, is it money? Is, is, that what it, is this a situation of if you don't kind of like an individual can have this, if you don't do, if you don't send me $20,000 right now, you'll never be able to get back into your thing. I've locked you out of all your information and that kind of thing. What, what do most, and what are they looking for? Is it money? Is that there it? are three things okay. that company, that, that, uh, you, three reasons why you'd go okay. into business. Number one is national security. You might go into uh, a transmission of energy, a, a, a generation mm -hmm. distribution for a national security reason, meaning that eventually, at some day, you may want to shut it down and paralyze. This that is state. warfare. That's then? warfare. Oh, okay. That is an act of war. Okay. But that's one reason they go in. Right. A second one is to steal intellectual property. Okay. And the <clears throat> most aggressive in that uh, are, is, is China. Okay. Uh, they have stolen trade secrets, international, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the kind of thing is protected by copyright, and they have just gone in and stolen it, and oh. that has taken place. Mm. And the third is, is the trade secrets or the ransomware, and that's as you just described. Mm. Mm. Uh, there, there's a case right here in the Farming and Valley yeah. of a medium-sized business um, that got hit. They did have cyber insurance. They did, obviously did not have oh, that's protections. Oh, that's interesting, cyber insurance. Okay. They, they, they didn't have the protections because okay. they, were, they were compromised. Yes. But they did have insurance. And when they were hit, they called the insurance company and said, turn off everything <laughs> and you will have a call right away, immediately after right. you get off the phone, from a small law firm that handles this kind of stuff. Okay. Law firm called them immediately and said, we're sending people out, make sure everything's unplugged. And let's see what happened. They looked at the ransom demand, mm -hmm. and they went. You can call. You can call these people up. You go through a broker. Okay. It happened to be in London. They okay. called them up and said, "You've just attacked this company in the Farmington Valley. Right. Um, what do you want? Well, we want three Bitcoin. And they argued them oh. down to two Bitcoin. Oh, for heaven's sake! We'll take care of this, but not. A, in other words, they bargained the price down. Yeah. You know, <laughs> negotiate. Negotiate. <laughs> the other thing they did is they said. This is a pretty good bad guy. In oh. other words, when you pay them, they really will unlock you, and they have oh. the ability to unlock oh. you. Some do the threat, they don't have the ability to undo the damage they've done in the first oh, place. My Lord. So you play the ransom, oh, and you never Lord. get it unlocked. They say, no, these are, these, are, these are pretty good thieves. So what happened was they paid the two Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, they got it unlocked, yeah. and then they said, don't do anything until you bring in professionals to put up, to do all the security work you should have done a long time right. ago. Right. And they did, and oh, it came is, in, and, yeah. it, and it's working now. But to give you one case yeah, study yeah. of how it works. No, no, that's very interesting. Okay, and have there been people who have been, I guess, hit before, and then they get hit again? Yes. Oh, boy. Including some towns in Connecticut. Oh, my. Now, when I talk to mayors, selectmen, and everything else, I say, one of the first things they say, we will never negotiate with terrorists. We will never bargain right. with cyber attackers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a matter of principle in there. Mm -hmm. They're vigorous and a bit righteous about it. Mm -hmm. um, that lasts until <laughs> until it well, happens. no, until it hits, and then yeah. suppose you are the uh, the town manager right, or the mayor, right, right. and your police cannot get calls, your fire department cannot respond to fires, your ambulances can't go out. Suppose a child dies, right, because of your incompetence. Right. The voters would say right. you're protecting your town. Right. Suppose you have a a, a a fire happens, and they can't call in and say we have a fire and the house burns down and somebody gets injured or killed. How long do you want that to go on? Bef bef and, the, and the demand may be 10,000, 20,000 bucks. Sure, sure. So eventually the, 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 the mayor, the first mm -hmm. selectman, the town manager mm -hmm. says, when they look at the possible number of things that can go wrong, they're, they're yes. sobered. Yes. And then they realize, suppose they steal all the tax records of every citizen <laughs> sure. in town. Right. And that goes on out and becomes public. Right. And all this can be fixed for ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, and and then that that righteous indignation, yes. which is which is real and understandable. Yeah. They say I can fix this problem, so they do. They pay the twenty thousand, and then they come in and you pay it. You're you're up and running. Right, again. right. Some towns have not done what they should have done in the first place and fixed the system, and three months later they get it all over again. So why would you not want to bring some in some expert to fix what just happened to you? Believe me, I have no answer for that question. Oh. I, it is absolutely <laughs> unfathomable to me. If you've oh been my. hit once and you see what could be done, right. why would you not fix it immediately and prevent it from happening Particularly again? if lives are at stake. Lives are at stake. So I would think that the police departments, the fire departments, all of these guys are on board. This is their responsibility to, to keep people safe. That's right, and yet 
look, life is complicated. We've got so much going on. Mm. The last thing we need is to spend more money on more defense systems, especially when most people believe it'll never happen to me. Well, that's very true. Uh, I mean, I, th I think that's a naive naivete that, that uh, really people have to get on board. And that's why we're doing this interview, because we want, to, we want people to know, we want these viewers to know that, that there, you have been sitting on this and that you are continuing to consult with the state of Connecticut and that you are working with the European. And I guess that's a kind of a coalition of its own because, hey, if you discover something we don't know yet, you share it with us. And if we discover something, share it with them. Is that kind of the role you're playing? Well, yes, it you? is. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting that after the Berlin Wall fell, a number mm -hmm. of European countries that had been uh, under the Soviet Union became free countries. Mm -hmm. They had now privately owned mm -hmm. uh, utilities. They were okay. used to be all state run. Mm -hmm. Now they're privately owned, they have to be regulated. And regulation was a brand new field for much of Europe. That plus the fact that cyber is new for all of Europe. Yes. So the State Department, AID, has helped them become regulators and has also helped them to learn how you can build a resilience. And Connecticut has been one of the models well, internationally well, that has worked. And so I go over there and try to tell them, here's how we bargained <laughs> with our utilities. And it worked in Connecticut. And he's, he, there's some of the things you can do to strengthen your resilience. Right. Well, I, I think what's important for our viewers to know, I, you, they can go on the internet to learn more about this. Yes. Uh, so what you can Google the Connecticut State uh, Cybersecurity <laughs> Strategy okay. and the Connecticut Action Plan. Okay. It's there. Um, the it was a Malloy administration, yes. And, yes. and I'm not quite sure what the there. new governor is going to do. Right. But they they are interested in cybersecurity. They express interest in it, mm -hmm. and they are going to have a CISO. A, um, a, a chief information security officer come in eventually. Okay. And so I, I am it, sure there will be... Are they on be, a, uh, this is a nation, national... National search, and I'm sure okay. they're going to take it seriously and, yes. and, and find a way forward. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Art, it's been very interesting talking to you and catching up with you. Uh, I do hope our viewers have enjoyed this, and uh, you can go online, as he said, to uh, find out more about it. And I very much appreciate your time. Thanks, Art, sir. Really it, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you. Okay. All right. And so this is Susan Patricelli Regan uh, signing off today. Uh, please watch all of our programs on www.ctvalleyviews.com. Me and the cat. <laughs>